The 2019 legislative session, productive but also contentious and controversial on some issues. It was the first session for Governor Brad Little as governor. He vetoed a bill that would have made it much harder for voters to put an initiative on the ballot and signed a controversial Medicaid expansion bill into law that includes work requirements for some recipients. Also, big developments on raising starting teacher pay and treating our first responders who suffer mental injuries on the job. Today, Governor Brad Little on his first 100 days in office and the first legislative session during his administration. Ahead on Viewpoint. From Idaho's News Channel 7, this is Viewpoint. And welcome to Viewpoint. I'm Doug Petcash. The 2019 legislative session lasted 95 days, making it the third longest in Idaho history. It was marked by passionate public testimony over Medicaid expansion and the ballot initiative process. It was also marked by long hours working and reworking bills over those contentious topics. This, of course, is Governor Brad Little's first legislative session as governor, and he is now also marking his first 100 days in office. The 33rd governor of Idaho is my guest for the half hour to talk about some of the big things that did and didn't happen during the session. So, Governor Little, thank you so much for your time coming in today. Great to be here. So does it in any way surprise you that the session lasted this long and became the third longest in history with the issues that were on the table? Yes. It surprised it, it, you? It did surprise me. I, what, what about <coughs> it? Well, I mean, early on, we passed the appropriation for uh, my recommendation for the appropriation for Medicaid, and I thought that would, uh, I, I knew there was gonna be a, dis a big discussion on it, but I just thought it wouldn't take quite as long. And so why, um, why did you decide to sign the, uh, the Medicaid expansion bill that includes work requirements and some other sideboards um, in the way it was presented to you? Well, th there was always gonna be a, a bill besides the appropriation because everybody agreed that the, you know, there's some good things in that. One of them is a the mental health waiver uh, so that people in Medicaid, we've got a pathway to get them into um, mental health care. And that, th th there are several good things in there. It was just, what were the other parts of it? And the work requirement is still, we have to get a, we have to get a waiver from the federal government. And, and that's gonna be uh, a precarious situation to get that. I'm hopeful uh, that by next January, when all this is implemented, the legislature will be back here and we will know a lot more. We'll know what waivers other states have been granted, what waiver will be granted, We'll know what works. The Department of Health and Welfare will have their arms around this population about what needs to change. I advocated that early. I said, I understand uh, that, you know, the legislature and I want a pathway for people to have a better job to where they can move off of Medicaid. Uh, I've been a passionate uh, advocate for the, our short-term plans, which was a bill we passed this year. All those things work together in how we provide health care to a large segment of our population. We'll know a lot more the, the different incremental parts of the work requirement. We're going to learn some from the federal government, some from other states, and some from health and welfare. In your uh, transmittal letter to the Senate um, announcing your signing of the bill, you expressed concerns about quite a few things, the work requirements for able-bodied people to get Medicaid coverage possibly resulting in costly lawsuits, as well as concerns about the administrative burden, some questions about how much this will all cost, but you still signed it. So was it with those hopes that it would be tweaked or? Well, the way the waiver process works with the federal government, we won't know until almost when the legislature's back. That's why at the end of that letter I said, I'm asking the legislature to, in the interim and at the very end of the session, to dive right into this so that some of those problems where we're open to litigation, we can address and put to rest early on in the next session. So that was the end of that letter I talked about. Here's some things that I think are, are issues with the work requirement, but we need to get to work on it so that when the legislature comes back, uh, we can resolve it as fast as possible. Lots of testimony against it. Um, I know a lot of people weighed into your office uh, by email and phone calls. Um, from what I understand, a large majority of those against this particular bill because it wasn't what the 61% of voters had approved in November. They wanted a clean bill, no sideboards. Um, how heavily did you weigh the opinions and the testimony of people who, who contacted your office well, and testified? We, we always 
that, that's important. That's that's my job, is to listen to all the people of the state of Idaho, and and to take it all and and put it into a package. But as I said, there were some good things in that bill. Frankly, uh, Representative Vanderwaddy's first first bill uh, had a more had a pathway to where it was similar to what's in Montana, to where. A, if you're working, it's not a big bureaucratic hassle, and B, if you're not working, uh, there's workforce training and other uh, pathways to get into. I think we can modify this if we need to, uh, going on to where it's more like that first proposal than the last proposal. So it's not something that's set in stone, it can no. always be reworked a little bit and tweaked. And there was a lot of, well, they're gonna do this, the federal government's gonna do this, we will know uh, next January, what the federal government's going to do, and then we'll have a lot more certainty. Okay. Um, other big issue, of course, was the a lot of the back and forth about voter initi uh, voter ballot initiatives. Um, you vetoed two bills in relation in regard to that, and uh, bills that basically would have made it much more difficult for citizens to get initiatives on the ballot. Why did you veto that? Well, it, it, you characterize it as much more difficult. A lot of people characterize it as impossible. And, uh, you know, we, we have adjusted, uh, the legislature and the state has adjusted, uh, you know, how we, how we gather the signatures, what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, distribution around the state signatures need to take place so that, you know, the classic is they go to the Western Idaho Fair, they go to two or three events and get all the signatures they need. And then the people in the more uh, rural parts of the state uh, just don't get to have their, uh, they're not part of the process and we want them to be a part of the process. But this, uh, this proposal we looked at very, uh, uh, we did a deep dive into the constitutionality of it and we just said it's, we're, I, I was 80% confident it would be struck down by the courts. Do you think that the current initiative process is good, is sufficient, or do you think it needs to be tightened up? Well, I, I in that in my veto letter, I talked about uh, you know the issue of single subject, which is how we have to pass every law in the state of Idaho. The issue of what's the fiscal impact. I I have no qualms with those kind of of additions onto our law, but I just don't want to make it to where it's impossible for the citizens' voice to be heard. Do you think there's a compromise then? Oh yes. For where it stands right now with 18 months to gather signatures, 10 percent, or is it, uh, my percentage slips my six, mind. Six. percent in, in 18 of 35 yeah. legislative districts. Do you think that those requirements do need to be a little more stringent? I, I'm, I'm open to them. I just don't want it to be impossible. I want it to be to where uh, that, what we put into the Constitution uh, in the early 1900s is still available to the citizens. Um, something that happened right at the end of the session, the House and Senate didn't agree on a bill that uh, um, that must be passed each session to keep the state's 8,000 some pages of administrative rules in place for the next year. It's normally a routine thing. It didn't happen. So it kind of puts those rules into a bit of limbo right now. And they affect a lot of things everything. for everything. And so what can you do about making well, sure that those rules stay in place? The, the the effective date of what we call the drop dead bill, that's the bill at the end of the session that, that takes all the rules that the legislature's been working on and makes them permanent. Uh, the effective date is that is the uh, 1st of July. Mm -hmm. So between now and the 1st of July, I as a governor will propose new temporary rules to just extend all the rules that are out there. And then the legislature will take it up again next, next year. year. So there's no consideration right now of calling a special session to get that done? No, no. Okay. Um, education was your number one priority. Um, Absolutely. You said it over and over again on the campaign trail, your inaugural address, state of the state. Um, many of the priorities, this was a huge issue that was uncontentious this year. It happened very quickly. Uh, increased funding for public education. Approved and you signed the law to increase starting teacher pay to $40,000 a year. And the legislature agreed with you to double funding to $26 million a year for K through three reading programs. Um, are you pleased with how all of that played out? I, I'm very pleased. I was, I was pleased that there was, uh, you know, the support in the legislature. I was very pleased with what I heard from the, from the educators in the classroom and the trustees and the, and everybody in the education 
uh, in the education field, all the professionals, because if we're spending half of the taxpayers' money on public education, we got to get these kids reading proficiently at the end of the third grade. Just two years ago, we implemented uh, what we call the uh, individual reading initiative. We now have a way to track that. And so as we, uh, we first piloted it in a lot of school districts very successfully, now we've spread it out over all the school districts. With that IRI as our basis, we want to allow those districts, because kids are different. Mm -hmm. You know, they're different in Rexburg and Moscow than they are in Emmett and, and uh, Homedale. So we need to allow those local school districts to take what tools they have available, the existing tools and new tools, and get these kids reading proficiently by the end of the third grade. And how, how important is it, do you feel, that the starting teacher pay was set at a minimum of 40000 a year? Well, we have made a commitment to put more money into the, to the uh, teacher grid for all the teachers. But what was concerning me was when I would go on campus and go to the education colleges, how many of the kids that were taking education were going out of state to teach, or how many of them were saying, I just don't want to teach. I, you know, I can be any other kind of a professional and make more money. And I wanted to send that signal uh, to the young people who are thinking about going into the education field that we value them in Idaho and we want them to teach right here in Idaho. Um, and so what needs to happen going forward then with the five-year plan ending from the last um, task force, the, f the career ladder plan is over after it's implemented this year. What has to happen next? Well, the career ladder will go on and we're, we're the legislature had a pretty healthy discussion about how to use it. Uh, we, one of the last bills that passed, one of the last bills that I signed, was for a new task force going forward. And what's taken place since the last task force, one of the things that's really been evident is we have, uh, we have grade the lines between K-12, higher education, and career technical with all our dual credit advanced opportunities with what we're doing uh, with these kids early to put them on a path uh, to work in a plant or a career technical area. We need to look at how our students are changing, how education is changing, how we embed uh, uh, better teacher pay, how we embed performance into how we pay our, our teachers. One of the things that there's pretty good agreement on is we have test scores and they're okay. Mm -hmm. But what's really important is how these kids grow. If a child shows up and has had a challenging childhood, uh, parents have had problems, whatever it might be, we want to measure their growth. Uh, and we don't want the only schools that do well as the kids that all come 100% prepared. So we want growth to be a component of how we measure the success of our teachers and our schools. All right. Governor, thank you very much. We're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and continue our conversation with Governor Little next on Viewpoint on some of the other big issues in the legislative session. Right now, buy a tree from Victory Greens and we'll plant it for free. Save time and effort by letting our experts take care of the work for you. Visit Victory Greens today. We guarantee the lowest prices. The epic seven-day sale is on now at Furniture Row. And when we say it's epic, we mean epic. Shop today and find epic savings on sofas, sectionals, and accent chairs. Epic markdowns on dining groups, tables, and bar stools. Epic deals on bed sets, dressers, mattresses, and adjustable bases. Plus, 72 months no interest financing. That's no interest until April 2025. Shop the largest selection at the lowest prices guaranteed. The epic seven-day sale, only at Furniture Row. Do you use catheters? Are you using the catheter that's really best for you? Oh yeah. For years, I'd been using one kind of catheter and I never knew that there were other really great catheters available until Liberator sent me samples to try. If I had not tried the samples from Liberator, I might never have found the perfect catheter for me. Liberator Medical sent me a catheter that was easier for me to use right out of the package. Now that I've found the best catheter for me, 
It's made my life much easier. My catheters were completely paid for, not a dime out of my pocket. There are so many innovative catheters. Get the best catheter for you. Call Liberator Medical. Get your free catheter sample pack. Call 1-800-470-1960. That's 1-800-470-1960. Right now, buy a tree from Victory Greens and we'll plant it for free. Save time and effort by letting our experts take care of the work for you. Visit Victory Greens today. We guarantee the lowest prices. And welcome back to Viewpoint. I'm Doug Petcash. Education, Medicaid expansion, and the ballot initiative process were very big and important issues in the legislative session, but lawmakers dealt with many other topics as well, and so did Governor Little. We'll talk about some of those now as we continue our conversation with Governor Brad Little. Um, Governor Little, first of all, uh, you signed into law the bill that would give first responders uh, workers' compensation for mental injuries suffered on the job, post-traumatic stress injuries. They see some horrible things when they're on, on the job and they have to deal with that. Why was that important to you to sign? Well, they were covered before, but they had to have a physical, a physical injury, yeah. injury, injury. This is, you know, I talked to one of the uh, I talk to these people all the time, both the firefighters and the police, and and particularly with this, with the drug problems we're having right now, it is amazing how many uh, events that would shock most of us regular people uh, they have to see every week, and and so some of those incremental problems to where it's, uh, you know, something really terrible or multiple ones, good you know, good counseling, good early care is is good for them and it's good for us as the taxpayers. We pay their, uh, you know, our public safety people, we pay their salary. If, as a as a business, if, if you were an individual in a business and you had those people working for you, you would do that. It was just the right thing to do. Um, the bills to legalize hemp, or at least uh, allow its transportation through Idaho died. Of course, the federal government had legalized the production of hemp in the farm bill. Um, the session lawmakers decided, or nothing happened with that. Where do you think that that issue should go? Should it be synced up with the federal law or, oh, or not? Idaho has never been a state to say, oh, we'll just let the feds take care of it. We'll do whatever they want. That's just not in our DNA in Idaho. And that's why I was, uh, the, the last bill that came over from the Senate, uh, I thought, uh, address that. My issue, I don't have any problem with hemp. My issue with hemp is, is if it's used as camouflage for recreational marijuana. And I just wanted to make sure that that we didn't have trucks coming through Idaho given the proliferation of the, of, of the growing and processing of marijuana in all the states around us, or many of the states, uh, that they use hemp is camouflage to bring recreational marijuana into Idaho. The growing of hemp, I had no problem with at all. Okay. Um, you also did sign legislation to combat the opioid epidemic uh, by making it easier for people to get opioid overdose reversal drugs. What else needs to happen? We, we've life? got a, we're gonna do an executive order. I'm gonna do an executive order very soon. And because it is so encompassing. You know, it, first it was opioid and now it's heroin, uh, and, and a lot of other really bad things that are, are out there on the streets in Idaho. We need to bring in the mental health component of it. We need to bring in those other advanced uh, uh, pharmaceuticals and illegal drugs that are, that are being a problem. We need to talk about how we address it early and then what do we do when they get into corrections and the justice system. Right now, if you have if, if you are a person of limited means and you have a loved one uh, that has a problem, the best way for them to be addressed is have them go into our justice system and go into drug courts. I want to expand that further. And that's what your executive yes. order is going to focus on. Um, one of your proposals uh, in your State of the State address um, that you had talked about was the, the first time home buyer's savings account, but it didn't get out of committee. Um, what do you think was the, the issue with well, why that didn't go forward? Well, well any kind of a new tax bill, uh, when you when you get into the tax area, you want to look for unintended consequences. What I would really like would be for the federal government to join the state of Idaho. 
you run, you ran a story today about the price of homes going up, and the bottom line is more and more people can't afford for that first time home buyer. And if, if we can plant that seed in young people's mind to start saving that money to where they can get enough equity to buy that first home, then as the homes go up in value, they're protected because their existing home goes up. And, and that's why that's so important to me. But because it was a tax bill, the unintended consequences are what the legislature was concerned about. Are you gonna keep pushing for, yes. for that? Yes. And it would work kind of like a 401k, wouldn't it? It would be pre-tax right. contributions that people can make in it or to make their down payment on. And, you know, who qualifies? Banks, savings and loans, uh, other non-traditional, uh, that's part of the issue. But it, it's over, they have it over in Montana, and it works quite well. Um, speaking of tax bills, you had um, expressed an interest in eliminating the grocery tax. Is that still At, on your mind? Yes. One of the things the legislature did this year was we address the Wayfair uh, lawsuit, Supreme Court suit, and we are taking the new revenue from the Wayfair decision and putting it into a fund uh, for tax relief in the future. And so with that new pool of money, we will address uh, grocery tax uh, next year. I said that early on. I said, if it's going to jeopardize my education funding, we we may not do it the first year. And then we had all this uncertainty of revenue coming into the state. With the new tax laws. With the new tax laws. We will know by the end of this month, by the end of April, about that uncertainty by the 10th probably. And then we'll know how much money's being into that to be available uh, for the grocery tax uh, next year. 30 seconds. Okay. Um, what do you expect to be the big issues next year? Uh, education funding uh, will no doubt be as, as it always is. Uh, there'll always be something, mm -hmm. uh, but that's, that will probably be, what's, what do we do next? Uh, we've completed the first five years on, on education. What will we do on the education funding formula, which we spent a lot of time talking about this year? Uh, what's, uh, what are we gonna expansion, yeah, yeah, Medicaid expansion, those will be the big issues next year. All right. Governor? Um, have so far appreciated your time. I want to talk to you about an issue that's going on in the state right now when we come back. That is still ahead on Viewpoint. Parts of Idaho are dealing with some serious flooding. Next, what the governor has already done and what he's keeping his eye on as the snow melt continues. I love an ice cream sandwich on a sonic night. The official beginning of cargo short season. Guess how many ice cream sandwiches I can fit in my car? Three? Seven? No way. You say three? Don't insult my cards, bro. Hurry in for Sonic Nights. New 149 ice cream cookie sandwiches and half price shakes after eight. More epic than wing suiting the Alps. More epic than diving with great whites. More epic than Brandon moving out of the basement. It's the epic seven-day sale at Denver Mattress. Right now, get a free $300 Furniture Oak gift certificate when you purchase any Tempur-Pedic. Or try the Madison Flush or Firm, only $699.99. And check out the Summit Queen, only $199.99. Plus, 72 months, no interest financing. The epic seven-day sale, only at Denver Mattress. Everyone who has ever lived has lived here. All of mankind's triumphs and failures. Every moment every hometown, all here. We start our coverage on the ground and take it to the airwaves so you always know what's happening in your own world and beyond. We are free TV and radio. We are breaking news. We are always there. We are broadcasters. Race for the Cure's bold goal is to reduce the current number of breast cancer deaths by 50%. That's a mother, a sister, or a friend. Together, we can make this goal a reality. Sign up now and begin fundraising with your team. Money raised will go toward quality health care services for people right here in our community who may be underinsured or uninsured. To find out more, visit the community page at ktvb.com. Sonic's new BBLTs are great. Yeah, the BB stands for bacon bacon. And the LT stands for look at those tomatoes. Well. Don't miss out on Sonic's new $3.99 bacon bacon lettuce and tomato sandwich with tots. Spring rains and snow melt are causing some serious flooding in parts of the Gem State. Governor Little even declared states of emergency for Idaho and Adams counties. 
So I want to catch up with him on, on the situation there. This week, Governor, you uh, toured the areas in uh, North Idaho there, uh, North Central Idaho. What is the situation? Well, it's way better. The uh, In one day, the South Fork of the Clearwater went down a foot, and that was when the water was running right down Main Street to Stikes, going into stores, houses, uh, crawl spaces, uh, and we had two pretty significant uh, state roads that washed out uh, great big cavernous holes that it's going to take a year to get those roads back open. Uh, the people aren't totally isolated. They've got alternative routes, but some of those routes are not on uh, on very good roads. So we, we need to get to work on that. Uh, but right now, this today, uh, it's, it's better, but it all depends upon how hot it gets. If it gets hot How fast, fast yeah. uh, the the Weezer River, uh, that flooding there is kind of down under control. There's been a little damage there. Uh, I think there were only six uh, families that were displaced up in the uh, Kamii, Kuski, Stikes area. And what, what we're seeing video here is of the, the council area that was also right. dealing with some serious flooding. Some families got cut off there. How often do you get Briefed on uh, you know the situation. Well, when like it, this. if it's bad, multiple times a day per day, and okay. and I'll, I'll get a phone call at night if there's if we have to make a initial declaration. So you, as I mentioned, you declared emergencies for Idaho and Adams counties. What does that do for them? Well, it it frees up some state resources to help the city, the county, the highway district. Uh, we work together. We do a lot of planning in the state of Idaho. Uh, you know the Red Cross. Any of the local philanthropies that service organizations, we just try and coordinate. Uh, we use Idaho Department of Transportation, uh, a lot of their trucks, whatever equipment we need to do to open up an area. We deployed our National Guard and the Boise Dive Team mm -hmm. uh, to rescue some people. So it just opens up a lot of resources that are available for the local communities. We just have a few seconds left. Um, what areas now are you keeping your eye on? those same ones? Prob yeah, but probably the Wood River Valley, Ketchum, Bellevue, uh, that will be an issue given the enormous snowpack that's there. Mm -hmm. uh, the Boise River, they seem to, here locally, the Boise River, they seem to think that they've got that managed, but you know, if if we have, if, if we see an eight in front of Larry's uh, weather report, then all all bets are off. There's going to be a 75 yeah, on, well that, on uh, Thursday. It, so but it'll cool off at night a little bit. Governor Little, thank you so much for your time. You bet, you bet. I always Thanks, appreciate Doug. it, sir. And that is all of our time for this week's Viewpoint. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Doug Petcash. I'll see you tomorrow on today's morning news and right back here next Sunday morning for another Viewpoint.